No train driver wants to be cooked alive. That is kind of brilliant. Uh, for you. <laughs> that is a real idea. I think that's the first time you ever had one of them. <laughs> Shut up. You might be the first bastard to ever have half his brains eaten by a wolf and end up more intelligent. Both John Marson and Arthur Morgan are incredibly well-written characters. So well, in fact, that it's easy to forget, technically, we are playing horrible people. And the majority of us, I want to say at least 99% of us that have played both games, are more familiar with the story of Arthur Morgan, the man who was loyal to a fault, blindly listening to orders, doing whatever it took to satisfy Dutch and the gang's needs. Very rarely, I mean, he jokes about it, Hosea does as well, well, seemingly everyone around him, all like to poke fun of Arthur being this brute, this enforcer, someone that's just basically doing what he's told, and that is it. He's not a thinker. If that was the case, or even if he placed his own desires, wants, and needs in front of Dutch, the gang, or just his overall loyalty to both entities, then chances are he would have ran off with Mary Linton a long time ago. But obviously he didn't. That's not the story we get, that's not the Arthur we got, it's not the journey that we're taking through. We're taking down a path of someone that suffered for blind loyalty. And, in a glorious fall from grace and a desperate scramble to at least save as many people as he can, he tries to do as much good universally to at least feel better for himself. With the game being much newer, way more ambitious, and in some ways a lot more accessible than the original game, those are all factors that play into why so many people have played Red Dead Redemption 2 and have yet to play the original. Maybe one day we'll get a real proper remake of the first game, as I feel, you know, I think that game deserves that amount of love and attention, but for those that have never played the first game, what you're missing when it comes to John is he's almost an entirely different person. Now, of course, things change over time. People change, they grow up, they mature, or even they harden over time. Their priorities, their goals, the things that they're focused on and how they handle certain problems or situations may all change. That's just how we grow up and evolve with time and experience. The first game is set some time after the events of the second. John is much older, and I do have a couple videos coming out set to really compare and contrast Arthur to John in depth. So if you're interested in that or any other Red Dead content, please feel free to subscribe. But there's something that I mentioned in a previous video that I was even questioned for, and I found myself thinking this way again. So rather than just confining it to a video, I wanted to share it here and get everyone else's perspective on it, and then I can implement it into videos moving forward, make it more of a solid community thing. But what I said was, I felt John was much more brutal than Arthur. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Arthur's not brutal. He is. He's, as I said at the beginning of the video, he's loyal to a fault. He's got a one-track mind. There's nothing that he holds more closely to his heart than loyalty. If it wasn't for Dutch, if it wasn't for Hosea, or even the gang at large, whoever Arthur ends up with, it's a life and death type of situation. He will protect that person no matter what. And it seems like he would even do it to a capacity where if he gets a little bit more of a softer side from, say, Mary Linton, it wouldn't always result in violence. And what so many people miss from John in the first game is, similar to Arthur, he does have a one-track mind, but it's kind of different. You see, with Arthur, there's two things that I think separate him. The first one is Arthur's held accountable. He has to deal with other people no matter what, whether if he likes it or not, because there's still a gang he's got to go back to. And these other members of the gang are involved with their own little projects or plans or whatever that they have to make sure become successful in order to tell Dutch and everyone else that, hey, I'm earning my keep. A prime example is Sodom back to Gomorrah. Karen and Bill were planning on hitting the Valentine Bank. However, they couldn't do so because Arthur Dutch and John shot up the town of Valentine. So when Bill and Karen try to get Arthur to come on board, they have a little bit of a back and forth. And when it's pointed out that Arthur did his business in Valentine, Arthur says it wasn't his fault. And Bill points it out. Hey, whenever you fuck up, it's not your problem. It wasn't your mistake. But when he fucks up, everybody makes fun of him. We got something cooking you might be interested in. Am I gonna like the sound of this? Been cooking since Horseshoe. But you went and kicked up all that commotion in Valentine. Now, we was preparing to rob the bank there until you got involved in all that nonsense, and I don't know, I just feel like it's unfinished business. That wasn't my fault. It was just one of them things. How come every time I get in trouble, I'm called a fool and an idiot? But when you get in trouble, oh, it's just one of them things. <laughs> so it may not be dramatic or completely drastic, but there's still that element there. You gotta be careful, because while you may not 
be bringing massive problems to the gang at large or even Dutch, you could possibly be stepping on other people's toes and you may have to deal with the repercussions or confrontation from that. So he is held accountable. John does not have that. John's one goal is a safe return of his family. And because John is in this little isolated state of mind, the anger in the position that he's in, I think, makes it worse. And that's another element I think we can all understand. Have you ever been so angry that you just start brooding? Nobody talks to you. You're just sitting there left to think more and more about whatever pissed you off. And next thing you know, the next person you see, you're just mean mugging the hell out of them. You just don't want to talk to them. You know that the second they open their mouth, all the shit that's weighing on your shoulders is just going to be dumped on them. And in your mind, it's their fault. Leave me alone. With John, he's left alone. He doesn't have anybody on his shoulders. There's no accountability. The writers intentionally left him black and white. We don't really know where his morals, values, and really line is drawn. And a lot of John's biggest, let's say, atrocities were all committed in Mexico. If we can add a little bit to how I said he's isolated and he's left alone, keep in mind, when John went to Mexico, the way he was greeted probably pissed him off more. I mean, think about it. He's got to go to another country to hunt down one man that's not only one of the guys he's got to hunt down, but he's possibly harboring the other guy he was originally hunting this of course being Javier Escuela and Bill Williamson and as soon as John tries to cross the river he's getting shot at because the guy that's bringing him to the country a man simply known by Irish pissed off the locals so now John is left to deal with the relationship that Irish established on top of that Irish already pisses John off because he tried to betray him at least once or twice after John clears out the hostile locals he makes his way to a nearby village where three people try to rob him. Hold it, Gringo. I think you're forgetting something. A little taxation. <laughs> I have a large family. <laughs> I too have a family, friend. So that we may see our families again, I suggest we part ways amicably. <laughs> Can I see the boots, gringo? I think you can see them from where you're standing just fine, senor. Take off the boots, americano. All of this compounded by the fact that there's no one really for him to talk to, or even, as I said, Arthur had some type of accountability that was going to come back his way. John doesn't have that. John also has little care for anyone else besides his primary goal of his wife and son returning. This is something that Landon Ricketts, a gunslinger hiding out in Mexico, identifies and he even tells him, you can't be jumping on both sides of the fence because eventually you will get impaled. More enemies by the day. Perhaps you would know. Rumor has it you've been making all kinds of new friends. I don't pay much attention to just rumors. Just be careful, John. Keep jumping from one side of the fence to the other. You might just get impaled on it. I have to find these two men. With respect, how I do it is no concern of yours. Choose your tone wisely, partner. Remember who you're talking to. How could I ever forget? Who are you, John Marston? Apart from a rat feeding every other hand he can find, my name means something. And it's that conversation that kind of foreshadows what John ends up doing. Because at this point in time, Mexico's caught in the middle of a revolutionary war. John helps out both the rebels and the army. And it's during the missions where he helps out the army that he does some of the more messed up stuff that I was talking about. One mission in particular, John goes to help the army clear out a village that's known as a rebel hideout. After all the armed men are killed, the Mexican army rounds up the women that are hiding there and ships them back off to the colonel that runs the area. And then they order John to burn all the houses. John doesn't do it exactly enthusiastically, but he doesn't stop them either. He does exactly what he's told. I heard the little horse crying in that house over there. <laughs> Remember! Nobody takes them before Allende. We did all this just to get women for Allende? <laughs> no, that's just a bonus. This village is riddled with rebels. Make sure they don't have homes to come back to. There are fire bottles over there. Use them to burn down some of these houses. And what makes you think I'd do that? You want to find Javier Escuela, don't you? John, you're helping Mexico. Vámonos, muchachos! ¡Buen trabajo! So in this one mission, John stomps out rebels that are already repressed by the local government. He takes part in human trafficking by allowing those women to get shipped off to Colonel Allende, and then he burns all the houses down. And there's never a moment of guilt or remorse. You could argue John had the same mentality that he was going to go out the same way Arthur believed he was going to go out. The way of a gunslinger, or he saw his death coming, and so why flip the mentality now? 
these are people that he doesn't care about. These are people that are kind of just obstacles in his way. His main goal is his family. Who cares about anybody else? Maybe if John got sick, similar to Arthur, we might have seen a mentality flip, but it's because of the goal, really the way he goes about it as well, that I've always thought John is a little more brutal than Arthur. John does some honorable stuff as well. The things that he does for Bonnie and her ranch shows a different side of him. However, it's not really an emotional plea. It's more strictly out of repayment. Bonnie and her father did save his life, so the least he can do is save the horses from a burning barn or any little help around the ranch. The writing and the amount of material that we get from Arthur to John is vastly different. So, of course, we just have what we see in the game to go based off of. And that was just always my take. Just the things John did alone in Mexico brings to question how far are people really willing to go for their family, for their loved ones, for anybody or anything they hold valuable? And to what point can we sympathize and root for that side until morals and ethics of the situation become a bigger issue? And if we were to venture a little bit outside of just the narrative, John does also have a stranger's mission where you can threaten someone's wife or hogtie her and bring her back to her husband. I mean, technically you can pay him off too, but if it wasn't within John's character to do that, I don't think Rockstar would have left that as an option to do. So it kind of goes back to the one-track mind. Arthur upholds loyalty, and yes, he does some horrible shit. At least he's loyal, and that's what you can always count on. John seems to just have one goal in mind, and he's the Hellbringer. As long as that goal is achieved, then he's satisfied. But of course, that's just my take on it. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. If there's anything else you want to add to this conversation, Besides some Arthur and John videos coming out, I am going to be tackling some of their side characters from Eagle Flies, Rain's Fall, the German family that saved Arthur's life, and so on. So subscribe if any of that sounds interesting or if you're looking forward to anything. And like always, I'm taking suggestions or recommendations down in the comment sections. You can email me, join the Discord, or even follow me over on Patreon. But until next time, I'll see you all later.